All right, question of the day. What is your favorite sequel to a game? Now, it could be anything. It could be Chrono Cross, for goodness sakes, even though it didn't really have anything to do with Chrono Trigger, except for maybe the girl, uh, kid. What, what's her actual name? Yeah, kid, right? But maybe it's Empire Strikes Back. Maybe it's uh, John Wick 2, which is, oh my gosh, so much even better than the first one. But let me know in the comments below, what is your favorite sequel? Because today we're taking a look at Far Shore. Now, it definitely sounds like I'm in Wisconsin, which I, as you're watching this, currently am in Wisconsin, and someone's saying, for sure, for sure, oh yeah, for sure, <laughs> but we're taking a look at Far Shore. This is a sequel, it's not an expansion, it's kind of a standalone of Everdell. Now, Everdell is one of the greatest games ever, right? You, It's in the name, ever. You're putting out animals, you're building your little town, they're cute, they're adorable, you have great little resources like twigs and pebbles and all that but now we're taking a look at what if we were taking those animals putting them on ships and shipping them all over the place not like that that sounded like more of a circus sort of deal but uh what i mean is you're, you, these animals are on ships now and they're traveling and they're collecting things from the shore the far shore as it were so let me know in the comments below what is your favorite gaming sequel as we look now at far shore All right, this is in fact Far Shore set up for two players or uh, different players, but all of this setup pretty much stays the same. Give or take, some of these are gone. And then you have more islands down here in the bay, which we'll get to. Eyes in the bay. Anyway, you have your little ship here, and then you got your meeples of choice. And we got crabs, we've got little swans, or geese, or whatever they're called, and you got other birds, little dodos, or whatever those are. And then beavers. You got all those there. You got your resources. This time we have twigs. Uh, little jewels, which I cannot for the life remember what that's supposed to be. Mushrooms, got about creatures with mushrooms. Seaweed, only the best seaweed here. And anchors. Everyone will have three anchors. These are what replaces the system of uh, the shopkeeper goes into the shop, right? Remember, you get that for free in Everdell. You also have these treasures, which are resources that you can just get. Uh, they're two points at the end of the game, or they're worth a single resource of your choice while. And you can do that by moving along this path on your shipboard. Certain things allow you to do that. Normal worker placement rules. You know, you've got your placement here to grab resources. You've got this space that will allow you to grab these. You're going to gain more workers at the end of each round or phase whenever you decide to prepare for spring, prepare for summer, prepare for fall. It's the very much similar flow as Everdell if you've played Everdell. The cards are out here. You can gain cards from out here. You can play cards immediately from out here without actually having to buy them into your hand, or you can play cards into your hand. So on your turn, you're going to take an action, which could be playing a card or getting resources by using your meeple. You can run out of meeples and then still have actions because you have cards allowed to play. The game ends, and when everyone finishes their last play there, a couple of the new things I want to point out. So one thing that will happen is these islands will go away as the time goes. It's a rising tide or something like that. Which is cool because these are pretty powerful and obviously you're kind of getting that feel of the game changing throughout the way. You also have these spaces here, ones with three feet on them, meaning that multiple people can go there. Otherwise, normally, only one character can go there. You can buy um, creatures by paying mushrooms or, like I said, you could spend one of your three anchors to just say, I'm buying that animal for free. A couple other things too is these winds of change. This will give you benefits and bonuses whenever you have these showings that's for every unique one you'll buy uh you'll you'll move your ship for so a lot of different things but pretty straightforward at the end of the day it is a straightforward worker placement game in which you have this amazing art like the art in this game is so good i mean just so great so that is how you play far shore far shore far shore uh, that's how you play far shore All right, that is Far Shore. Now, let's, as we do, talk about gaming. We talk about the visual appeal and how that goes into the gameplay and then so art, art direction, and gameplay, right? So art, first of all, this game is beautiful. Now, the one thing I still hate about Everdale Far Shore is the fact that you have to put that lighthouse or that tree together every time you play. You can't just leave it up and it sometimes frays and sprays and splays and all that sort of stuff. So that part is kind of a pain. However, once it's 
there, it's gorgeous. These little meeples, the you know, you get crustacean meeples, for goodness sakes. What other game has a crab meeple, after all? You got crabs, you got beavers, you got all these sorts of things that just look adorable on the board. Then you have the art on the actual cards. The game art of Far Shore and Everdell is some of the best in gaming, period. You've got, you know, moss flower or red wall, as it were, type animals where they're, I don't know, they're wearing clothes and they're doing things and they're harvesting and seafaring and far shoring or whatever. But the game itself looks amazing. Now, the art direction itself is very it's very simple. Because it is a worker placement game, typically that would mean that you go here, you get this, right? And all of that is easily explained by the spaces on the board. You go here, you get these contracts or deeds or maps or whatever they're called. You go here, you get these pebbles or berries or whatever they are. You go here, you get this. You go here, you do this. Now, what I love about Far Shore and Everdell in this system is that even if you're out of actions with your worker, so you've run out of meeples completely, you can still take actions if you have the resources to do it. Now, one thing that Far Shore does that I really like, instead of doing the, well, if you have the shop, you can have the shopkeeper for free, right? Which is cool. In this one, it's just, hey, three times per game, you can just build something for free which means you have three free actions completely just to do something, whether it be build a creature or, well, obviously it's build a creature because you can't do it without a creature, but you can build creatures into your area, critters, whatever they call, for free. And that is such a cool thing because you may extend your season out just a little bit longer if you do this carefully and judiciously. You you think, well, wait a minute, I can, I can pay for that, but I can... I can't pay for that, but I need that. And I really don't want to go to fall or spring or summer or whatever it is yet. I want to do these things as they come. So having that ability is nice and having it three times per game is great. Not to mention the free actions of moving the boat. Like I really love the idea of, well, if you do this based on whatever is showing the winds of change, you can do this for free. And moving that boat up is nice because you can get a whole lot of points from that at the end of the game. So far short to me is superior than Everdell. Now, I love Everdell. It's a great game, right? But I think I like Far Shore better. Now, if you ask Carla that, she'll say, no, she likes Everdell better, and that's fine. That's what's beautiful about a sequel, is that you kind of get the feel and flair of this system, and then you can pick which one you like better. So me, personally, like Far Shore better. So Far Shore, 8 out of 10, love this game. It's gorgeous, all that sort of stuff. So I'm Brian Drake here on the Dice Tower. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, etc. And if you're on the cruise right now, come find me. We'll play a game or do a trick or something. But Although, how are you watching this? Unless you bought the internet package, but uh, it's a different story. So I'm Brian Drake. We'll see you next time.